What's going on, America? Welcome back to another broadcast of Break the Chains Media. I'm your host, Corey, and today is February 18th, 2021. It's been a few days now that the Lone Star State has been suffering without power. Upwards of 3 million Texans have been struggling to stay warm due to a cold storm that has come through their whole state and now has crippled their electric grid. And I wanted to talk specifically about that and tie it to some other executive orders and uh, political, geopolitical things that have been happening with other countries, with President Biden, and with a certain red flag and yellow star country that hails from the east. Now, first, before we get into all that, if you could hit the subscribe button, check me out on my alt tech platforms, BitChute, Rumble, Mines, Gab, and Parlor is now back up, apparently, so I'm on Parlor as well. I've been on there for a while, but if you can find me on all those sites, I'd love to see you there. But we're going to jump into it because I have a theory, and to be clear, it's just a theory, but I was sitting back, I was looking at all the stuff happening, and I said, you know what? It's kind of interesting that this is happening right now. Granted, it is winter, and we do have cold temperatures, and people do suffer from power outages from time to time in cold weather situations, so let's not... Let's not fret that, you know, just because it's cold and, and the powers are out doesn't mean it's something weird's happening always. It is a common thing every, every time, time and time again, you know, we see it once in a while. But um, I, I want to address specifically to the fact that the a lot of people are saying it's because of the green energy, the green, the windmills and the solar, the solar panels. And that is not 100 percent the case. I do know that 23 percent of the Texas power grid is powered through wind and there were a lot of wind uh, wind farms that were offline during this time but um, there are other parts of the power of the pe Texas power grid that were not green energy that still were offline so I wanted to get into that and I wanted to tie it to an executive order that Biden pushed out that um, allows for China to potentially control the power grid. China and other countries, but particularly China, because we all know um, Beijing Biden likes to rub uh, rub tootsies and footsies with President Xi Jinping. So I got a couple things to show you about that, and we're going to jump right into it. First thing I wanted to show you is, in case you all don't aren't aware, this is the, the power grid of the United States, not including Alaska, of course, but you have the West Coast, you have the East Coast, and Texas all by himself, all by itself down here on its own, ran by a company, uh, a company called ERCOT, which is an acronym for something fancy and uh, great, but I can't, I don't know exactly what it is, but it is known as ERCOT, so I wanted to address that, and it, it, it is much more susceptible to power outages because it's on its own, and it can't take, it can't draw power from other parts of the country, it's all by itself, so it is potentially an easier target for someone wanting to meddle with a power system, with a power grid. So uh, take that into consideration. First article I have, Texas governor gives update on power restoration plan and many, many still without electricity or safe drinking water. Okay, um, about, around 7 million Texans are still under an advisory to boil drinking water uh, for safety for days, record low temperatures of damaged infrastructure and froze pipes. So uh, lots, lots of Texans are suffering with um, not ideal situation, uh, living situations. About 1.6 million homes have been have power restored today. Abbott wrote in a tweet. Uh, current power generation is restoring an additional 200,000 homes every hour. So that's good. So they are working on it. They are addressing the issues, and hopefully everyone in Texas is getting their power on soon as possible. Uh, this is what I was gonna. This is what I was talking about earlier. Mechanical problems or lack of supply of gas meant that about 19,800 megawatts of gas power generation was still offline, Abbott said in the presser. Frozen wind turbines and a lack of sun for solar power led to another 17.2 thousand megawatts remaining offline. So that right, that right there says that it's not necessarily green industry, uh, green infrastructure that caused the problem. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, green green in industry and infrastructure is a alternative, but it is not a solution to our climate crisis, to to envelop all this Green New Deal, this green climate legislation. Everyone thinks that, the, that the, all these 
green power solutions are gonna are gonna save us. And now don't there there are many op opportunities to install green and solar and wind and I I prefer geothermal and I prefer uh, um, uh, water uh, dam power you know um, hydroelectric you know but uh, because because the infrastructure that requires the think about the mining that goes into place for um, for the solar panels the the metals that go into place for the windmills the power the the battery supply and the power um, the power uh, tran transformers that need the materials that need to be mined for those things so there's still fossil fuel industries that 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 prop up the electric green energy industry so it's not clean energy as as many people want to want to uh, promote so um we're going to look down a little bit further here ERCOT said that thursday morning that the remaining outages are largely weather related rather than forced outages that were made early monday to stabilize the power grid okay we'll keep working around the clock until every single customer has their power back on said the system's director okay um so there is an investigation at Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has launched an investigation into the ERCOT alleging mishandling, which is going to be interesting to see what comes out of that investigation. ERCOT and other energy COS have slipped and fallen on their face. It's not the ICE's fault. They have left 3 million plus homes without power for days, including my own, Paxton wrote in a tweet. So it's going to be interesting to see what that hits. But I wanted to, what I wanted to do is I wanted to tie this to Biden's executive order. Biden's executive order could let China control the U.S. electric grid. Okay, um, so it's so he basically um, rescinded, or yeah, Biden, who has long been accused of critics being soft on China, issued a lengthy executive order in which, buried in mid matters purportedly designed to combat climate change, was an anomalous and potentially dangerous provision. The provision in question addresses nothing reasonably connected to climate change. Instead, it suspends for 90 days a key security measure put in place last May by President Trump. Biden's suspension of Trump's measure makes not the slightest sense. Trump's Executive Order 13920 declared a national emergency with respect to the nation's electric grid, prohibited the acquisition or installation of any bulk-powered electric equipment designed, developed, manufactured, or supplied by persons owned by, controlled by, or subject to the jurisdiction or direction by a foreign adversary. In sum, Trump forbade the use of grid equipment that is made in China, Russia, or other hostile nations. Okay? So, cybersecurity expert Joseph Weiss reported that officials found electronics that should have not been a part of the transformer, hardware backdoors that could allow Chinese to effectively gain control of transformers without... Uh, without any network forensics being the wiser. Weiss also reminds us that China was first caught trying to hack into the U.S. power grid in California as far back as 2001, and the Russians have been in our grid since 2014. Okay? Remote computer access may not only be the problem. In an interview with Tuesday afternoon, Tommy Walker, Director of Infrastructure Security at the Center for Security Policy and Director of Expert Coalition called Secure the Grid concerns extend beyond okay beyond remote computer control we're also worried about sensors and actuators that drive and are installed and are not connected to the internet if that hardware installed inside of them is designed at some point to send the wrong readings it could sabotage the safety and security of that system all right so this is biden's executive order it's very wrapped and enveloped in climate change and green energy and paris climate deals and passing new oil and gas leasing or uh, uh, pauses new oil on and gas leasing on federal lands um talks yeah it targets more than 100 trump era environmental and climate deregulatory actions talks about rejoining the paris climate agreement all this stuff is talking about climate change and how we need to green energy and push forward and all this all this good woo woo stuff right it doesn't talk much here it doesn't talk much about uh, the uh, the pausing of the suspension of foreign adversaries. Okay, um, but this is this is this is what it talks about: just green energy, green bills, pushing all this new um, new environmental movement, right? Uh, but it go it goes in it it, it kind of ties into what the ha what's happening with the weather in Texas right now. We want it. We it's all everyone's thinking about environmental and climate change, and and we need to make the make the world better places with our energies choices. All right. Well, China 
is massively expanding its weather modification program, saying it will be able to cover half the country in artificial rain and snow by 2025. This is from Business Insider. All right, and this is talking. This is trying to t popping up and talking about how it's able to uh, con t able to produce artificial rain and snow by um, 2025. Practice of cloud seeding was discovered in 1946. Um, so yeah, dude. So a lot of people say, oh yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, chemtrails and uh, oh yeah all this uh, barium salts and all this other stuff it's all it's all conspiracy theory um excuse me i am reading articles and there's there's several more talking about how cloud seeding and um using it to control the weather and modify different weather patterns so you can allow for uh crops and uh you know giving water to arid climates and and allowing less water in other climates and and uh, reducing hail for for uh, crop fields so it's all this all this guise and this practice of we're doing this because we're help we're, we're trying to make the world a better place we're doing this for for um for environmental reasons it's all good but at the end of the day what what kind of programs are they running that could potentially say throw in a a, f a freezing cold temperatures in a, in subarctic temperatures in a region that's not particularly uh, used to them, and in in concert with that, have a power grid crisis that now we are allowed to said be in, be involved with. Do you, do you see do you see what I'm trying to say here? Is is um, it's rather interesting to see this talk about China. Uh, launching a localized cloud seeding project in Beijing shortly before the 2008 Olympics. That's, I mean, that's a, over over a decade ago. We're talking about over a decade ago. They've been they've been talking openly talking about climate change, uh, cloud seeding, and geoengineering. Okay, in 2016, China allocated 30 million dollars to its cloud seeding project and started firing bullets fire, f filled with salt and minerals into the sky to change the weather patterns. Okay. Uh, a, a year later, China spent $168 million, a huge supply of equipment to facilitate the project, four aircraft and 897. So this is all talking about specifically in China and what they're doing within their own country. OK, and you're you're not going to see articles write, writing about how they can weaponize it. Right. They're going to say, oh, it's all good. It's all good. It's going to help everything. No, they're easily if, if they're writing articles about what it's doing to help the the, the country and help the world um, what are they doing in, in in regards to weaponizing the weather this is from the Bangkok Post can China control the weather uh, earlier this year January 11th 2021 it's it, it really talks about this, a similar thing 60% uh, of the country's territory more than 1.5 times the size of India hail suppression technologies abetted in 580,000 square kilometers Mastering the weather there seems like a lofty dream to some, but China has been using cloud seeding and other technologies for decades to produce more rain in drought-ridden areas and reduce hail and see like like I was like I was saying. So this is this is this is the article. That's what I was trying to that's what I was trying to show to you folks that this this theory of weather modification, geoengineering, cloud seeding, uh, chemtrails. It's not it's 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 proven that they've been doing it. Since as early as 1946, when the when the scientists discovered the idea, and then they were doing it, they were doing it as back as far back as Vietnam. The U.S. was doing it in Vietnam to to change the monsoon seasons. Okay, but think about this: you apply that technology with an adversarial country like the United States, um, and you're 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 putting them in a in a weak and vulnerable position, especially when you attack their power grid and you attack their their, their infrastructure, so you're allowing these these the population of the country to be dependent on these systems that you're now attacking and potentially breaking down. And on top of that, especially with Biden's executive order and how it's talking about China controlling the power potential, the potential means to have China control the power grid by using um, materials and, and infrastructure supplied by them to us it's it's a recipe for disaster and this is this is only weakening our independence and this is only uh solidifying the fact that beijing biden is in the pocket of xi jinping and china and 
that's what I wanted to say in this report, and I wanted I want you guys to check out these uh, these articles and do some more your own research. But um, I just feel like it's really important, and this is just the beginning of a transition from the 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 Wu flu meringue virus stuff that's that's kind of waning into this new wave of of climate uh, climate wars and and weather weather war and uh, this this fifth dimensional warfare that's not fought with tanks and and bullets and guns but it's 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 using strategic technologies and attacking critical infrastructures to weaken a country to then make them dependent or reliant on on the foreign adversary so with that this is Corey break the chains media follow me on all my alt tech parlor is now up and running so go check it out there bit shoot rumble mines and gab i'm there so folks Thanks for checking me out. Share it with your friends. I'd love to see you in the next broadcast.